Jamaica's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at just over 17%. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported a positivity rate of 17.6% in its latest update. The positivity rate follows the confirmation of 147 new cases from the 2,196 samples tested in the last 24 hours. This brings the total number of positive cases recorded since the start of the pandemic to 133,250. 54 of the new positives are cases reported from Kingston and St. Andrew, while St. James and St. Anne recorded 33 and 70 new cases, respectively. Two new deaths have been recorded. More than 3,000 Jamaicans have died from COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. There were 118 recoveries reported in the latest update. And Jamaica is now experiencing the fifth wave of COVID-19. This was reported by Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton at a COVID conversation today. There has been an increase in cases and in the positivity rate in the last few weeks, which the minister said is likely due to the Omicron BA2 subvariant. According to Dr. Tufton, this fifth wave differs from the other four waves in that the severity of the illness, along with the length of hospital stay, is now shorter. Minister Tufton said that the good news if you could classify it as such, is that the cases appear to be milder, but persons with comorbidities are at risk for more serious illnesses. He said that those who have mild symptoms or no symptoms may be at risk of developing long COVID, and so the public is being encouraged to practice infection control measures, including the wearing of masks, physical distancing, hand washing, and very importantly, stay at home when you are sick. Dr. Tufton reiterated that vaccination is still the best form of protection against the virus and continued to encourage Jamaicans to visit health centers to receive their shots, including boosters, once they are eligible. For her part, Minister of Education Favor Williams explained that at least six high schools returned to online classes for some students due to an increase in cases at the school. And following today's announcement of the fifth wave of the coronavirus, Prime Minister Andrew Holness reiterated the need for persons to stay home and isolate themselves if they are experiencing symptoms. We are now in the endemic phase of the pandemic, meaning that we have to learn to live with the COVID-19 disease. Uh, we have had two years of uh, managing the virus, the pandemic and its effects. Uh, the population now knows what to do to protect themselves. Wear a mask, sanitize your hands, maintain social distance. If you are ill, stay home. Uh, tests are available. You can get them uh, and do a test to verify what your status is. And once you know what your status is, if you are sick with COVID-19, uh, you should uh, stay home and uh, isolate yourself until you are tested um, as not being ill. He maintained that the government is still in a mode of readiness. Um, the situation as it is now, the government still maintains a posture of readiness. We always conduct our surveillance of the situation. If, if the data tells us that we have to act, uh, then we will act. But it is uh, not our posture or our position right now to seek to do anything uh, that would disrupt the recovery and the return to normalcy. Already, there are several challenges facing the economy, facing our society, uh, and therefore we have to maintain a posture of being resilient, being able to respond to shocks, being able to respond to crises without causing dislocation or resorting to extreme positions of uh, locking down. Mr. Holness also explained how ready is the health sector for the fifth wave of the virus. As it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the reports that I have been reviewing that have been provided to me suggest that the capacity that we built up over the last two years substantially still exists. So we should be able to respond. Thankfully, uh, we are not seeing a situation where the increased numbers are translating into requirements for bed space. Let us hope that that continues to be the case. But it will definitely uh, be the positive situation that we would want if citizens 
are responsible. If they wear their mask, sanitize, maintain social distance. If they are ill, staying at home, verifying their status. It's really now in your hands to protect your health. Meanwhile, the opposition spokesman on health and wellness, Dr. Morris Guy, says the cabinet and the Minister of Health and Wellness must take full responsibility for Jamaica's new COVID crisis and the fifth wave of the virus through the highly transmissible Omicron BA2 variant. Dr. Guy said that in revealing the presence of the fifth wave this morning, it is alarming that the minister confessed that the infection point has reached was reached rather on April 2022 of 2022, and yet the country was only being told four weeks later. He stated that Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton was off-handed in stating that the information was being provided so people could take steps to protect themselves when it is, in fact, the duty of his ministry to lead the public health responses. The statement today, Dr. Guy also added that the minister and the prime minister allegedly went against all caution and ended important public health protocols at a time when they know that the BA2 variant was present in Jamaica. He said warnings came from all country, the country's medical groups, some public sector doctors, public health academics, among others. The opposition spokesman went on to say that he had called for the retention of mask wearing indoors and the testing of arriving passengers in Jamaica, but the government, pressured by interest groups, ignored good sense. He added that the country is still prepared for the fifth wave as public testing for both PCR and, anti and antigen was at its lowest point with an over-reliance on private testing facilities. Dr. Guy has urged the government to immediately take all mitigating actions, including ramping up COVID testing in the public health sector, making self-testing kits available, particularly in sc the school system, where they are now virtually non-existent. The opposition spokesman also called for the restoration of mask wearing indoors and launching the design vaccination program promised in February. And as we continue with news on health, a medical officer of the health at the Westmoreland Health Services, Marcia Graham, has raised concern about the accuracy of coronavirus rec records in the parish because persons are using self-testing kits are not turning over the results to the authorities. Dr. Graham's revelation during the last general meeting of the Westmoreland Municipal Corporation coincides with rising COVID-19 cases amid what some health experts are already declaring a fifth wave of the pandemic. Dr. Graham explained that there are persons whose test kits are positive and they only come to the health department because their workplace has asked them to get a letter to go back to work, even though the public health system is not aware that these persons were COVID-19 positive because they did the self-test in the privacy of their homes. The medical officer said that the challenge has deepened with the availability of COVID-19 home testing kits at local pharmacies. Dr. Graham disclosed that some persons who had subjected themselves to self-test kits with the assistance of private doctors had refused to inform the health department of the results, opting instead to stay home. We now move to other news, and this evening the Central Kingston Police are reporting that they have named a, a person of interest. He's a Clive Lawrence. Lawrence is from Love Lane in Kingston, and he's been asked to make contact with detectives at the Central Police Station by 5 p.m. on Thursday, May 19, 2022. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Clive Lawrence is being asked to contact the Kingston Central CIB at 876-922. 5076, Police Emergency 119, Crime Stop at 311, or the nearest police station. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, the JCF, is asking individuals who may have fallen victim to a motor vehicle scam recently to come forward. According to a release from the JCF's Corporate Communication Unit, the CCU, these individuals may have been potential car buyers from the Tinson Pen Aerodrome located along Marcus Garvey Drive and the Kingston Wharf area who were promised, quote, good deals on motor vehicles by imposters and were defrauded thousands of dollars. The CCU's statement read that it is alleged that men falsely purported to be that of Mr. Derry Vaz, 
Mr. Kenneth Trainer Black or Mr. Jeffrey Hall and indicated that they could provide motor vehicles that were up for auction. As fraud investigators continued, the police are urging persons who may have fallen victim or may know possible victims to reach out to the JCF. In the meantime, anyone with information they believe can assist the investigation is being asked to contact the Fraud Squad at 876-922-2374 or send them an email at fraudsquad at jcf.gov.jm. The Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Grange, has announced that the National Labor Day project will be the renovation of the Mandela Park in Halfway Tree. Prime Minister Andrew Holness will lead the national project, which will involve landscaping, masonry, carpentry, painting, electrical works, lighting, as well as disinfecting and sanitizing. Minister Grange said that Mandela Park, which was named in honor of Nelson Mandela, the late former South African president and anti-apartheid hero, is in a very shabby condition, and the government felt it was necessary during this year when the country celebrates its 60th year of independence. Minister Grange said the focus of for Labor Day on Monday, May 23, is a protection of our heritage and environment under the broad Jamaica 60 theme, reigniting a nation for greatness. In this regard, the minister is urging the country to prepare for the Jamaica 60 Jubilee celebrations by cleaning up and beautifying communities, landmarks, and public spaces. Minister Grange said the slogan is Make Jamaica Chris and Clean and appeal to Jamaicans don't make this any ordinary cleanup like they have done in the past. Mayors, councillors and members of parliament will decide on the various Labor Day parish projects across the country. And those are the stories making the news. We now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with the sports. 